So on in 2D motion problems in class, I don't even think uh, I should be in the basket on the second tier. Get that one. Um, 2D in 2D motion in class problems number three. So in problem number three, we are working through our if-then statement for 2D motion. Okay, that's going to get us a long ways in terms of of filling in information. So use that sheet. I will keep color coding it because I think that's going to be helpful. I'm going to use black for the 2D motion. I'm going to use red, blue for para, um, projectile. Okay. So with what velocity will a daring duo cruising in a shop, shopping cart towards a 1.5 meter high ledge followed by a 2.5 wide drainage canal need to land on the other side? So with what velocity will they need to go in order to land on the other side of the canal? Okay. So if we kind of pull some numbers, it's one and a half high, two and a half meters wide. Okay. Those are the two numbers that we're going to, that are, those are the only two numbers given by the problem. So now, we want to kind of go through and figure out what these are. Quick sketch. Sketch that looks like a bird. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's why I never mind. Don't I don't do anything more than a quick sketch because they wouldn't turn out a whole lot better. Now, if we really wanted to make this, there are some spikes ah, that they got to be able to make it over. But it doesn't actually say spikes because I thought maybe it would make it more fun. But the idea is we're trying to figure out how fast do they need to be going from their shopping cart in order for them to land safely on the other side of the drainage canal that may or may not have spikes in it. Broken glass. Dirty. Okay, so we have one and a half meters high, two and a half meters wide. So if we're going to go through, this is one and a half meters. This is two and a half meters. From here to here, from here. That's what's given in our problem. I think a quick sketch, kind of putting those numbers on our pictures, hopefully kind of help clarify a few things. So, now working through problem types. Is this a 1D or is this a 2D motion problem? 2D, so I'm gonna use the same color coding method that I did yesterday. 2D motion, I'm gonna use black for my 2D motion. So everything I write in black, I am writing because I've identified it to be a 2D motion problem. So because it's a 2D motion problem, I, can, I need to make two lists, or two columns of variables. One for the X column, one for the Y column, and nothing from the X can be used in the Y except for my time it's the same because in 2D motion they're moving through both the X and Y simultaneously at the same time. Okay. So because it's 2D black marker. Blue marker I used yesterday for is it a projectile motion problem? Is the object moving freely through the air in both the X and the Y direction? Yes, okay, good. So because of that, the only force acting on the object is gravity, so therefore the acceleration in the y direction is negative g, and on Earth, that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And like I said, the only force acting on it is gravity, so therefore in the x direction, that is the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. 
Because my acceleration in the x direction is zero, that means my velocities in the x directions are in the x direction is constant, so those two are going to have the same value. We should use equation number three for in the x direction when it comes time to that. Is it a horizontal launch or is it an angle launch? Those are your two options. Horizontal, right? They're just going to go off of a cliff. They aren't going off of like a jump and then off the cliff. Um, if they were going off a cliff and they're off of a jump, then it looks something like that. Okay, they go up first, or they could, I guess, angle down. But this is not, it's a horizontal. Green marker. Horizontal launch tells me my initial velocity in the y direction is zero. And really all that's saying is as, how fast are they going up and down when they go off the cliff, when they first go off the cliff, the answer is they're not. They're going straight off the edge of the cliff. Parallel, level, flat. Green, red is numbers from the problem. So now, 1.5 meters, 2.5 meters. Where's 2.5 meters gonna go? Change in X, okay? And the way I drew my picture, it's moving to the right, so that's going to be a positive 2.5. 1.5 meters is? Okay, with one thing we have to add, though. Negative. Negative, because is the daring duo going up 1.5 meters or down 1.5 meters? The answer is down. I think I said I was going to use orange. Orange is what are we asked to solve for? And the answer is we are asked to say with what velocity must they be moving in order to make it to the other side. So I'm asking you how fast are they going off the edge of the cliff, which is in the x direction. Now, in a very nice simplistic world, we'd simply look for my variables in the x direction, we plug numbers in and we solve. If I don't give you time, chances are pretty good, you're gonna have to solve for the time in the opposite column first, then plug it back into the columns that you want. You can always try it, but remember we need to know three out of four numbers in order to, for any equation, there's four variables, we need to know three out of the four in order for it to work. And I, right now, I only know one, two, so it's, I gotta find time. <clears throat> so in the y direction, what equation? So we're gonna have to solve for time first here. Again, if you wanted to, you could try to solve for it um, directly for this, but you're, you're gonna need t. So in the y direction, what equation are we gonna use? Three. Three. We use equation number three a lot. We don't always use equation number three, but we do use it a lot. And I'll explain why right now. So it's pretty typical that in the y direction, we don't have enough information. My Mary start over. It's pretty typical that we use equation number three in the y direction because it's fairly common that we know how fast something is moving initially, but not necessarily how fast it's going vertically right as it is. It could happen, but it's not super common. So it's fairly common that we don't know the final velocity in the y direction, and with a horizontal launch, that number is zero. So that's, that's kind of why it, it works out that way. Because my initial velocity was zero, we get negative 1.5, is equal to one half times negative 9.8 times our t squared. One half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. 1.5 divided by four, negative 1.5 divided by negative 4.9 t squared is equal to 0 0.306, 306, 1, 2, 2, 4, 4, That's t squared, so square root 
square root. And I'm not going to take the square root of 0.31. I'm going to take the square root of all the digits in my answer. And I get a t value that's equal to 0 0.5532888888. And I'm going to round like that. Now, no, I did not forget. And I should talk about this. What's the square root of 4? Plus or minus. Okay, hopefully we're getting to that one. So what's the square root of 0.31? It's, it is plus or minus. Plus or minus 0.55 seconds. Now, if I use a stopwatch and I reset my stopwatch before I timed how long this took to go, my time is zero. So the idea is, is it going to be the positive time or the negative time? The answer is going to be positive. Because if I say on your mark, get set, go, negative time was before I said go. And you say, well, how is that possible? In this case, it, it can't. But remember, this is, if, if we say this is half of a parabola, there is really another half of the parabola, right? It's parabolic. It's just the other half is over here. So it's saying, when is, when is um, my height at here? Well, it's at 0.55 seconds, but then also at negative 0.55 seconds, it would have been the other half of the parabola would be over here. But that doesn't exist because it's on a cliff. And we reset our stopwatches. So yes, it is plus or minus, but with time, it is the plus. It is the plus. So now in the x direction, now that I know my time, my time is 0 0.55 seconds, 0 0.55 seconds. Uh, if it's a projectile motion problem, I would encourage in the x direction to use equation number three. So equation number three in the x direction, delta x, vi x times t, one half ax t squared, and that is equal to zero. Yeah, did I screw something up? Well, I just have a question. Oh, yeah. Why can't we use equation one? Why can't we use equation one for what? For the third? For the no, x direction? Yeah. You could. Basically, you can. Yeah, yeah you could. And that's it. basically, that is what we are using. Kind of, sort of. No, we're not, no, we are not using equation number one. We're using equation number three. But what equation number, um, equation number one it's an average says V average is equal to delta X divided by T. They're just the same for this one, so I feel like. Right, you could. Okay. Yes, absolutely, you could. If you would identify the fact that if you average these same two numbers, because they're the same two numbers, and you average them, they would be the same. You could. You could do that. So, the average, you could, but, um, yeah. I don't have the average in my list. That's kind of the big reason. I don't want to confuse it. So, if we go through and we say my delta x is 2.5, vi x, and then we can say 0 0.55 seconds, then we can go through and we can solve for this. Now, again, I am not going to use 0.55 seconds. In my calculator, I have 0.55328335. So that's the number I'm going to use. When I take 2.5, I'm going to divide by that number in the initial velocity in the x direction is going to be 4.518. So I'll round that to 4.52 meters. So if they go, that's the minimum speed they'd have to go to just make it over that canal, drainage canal. If they go faster, they would go further, right? If they go slower, they'd go shorter. If they go faster, so instead of going 4.52 meters per second, let's say they're going 8 meters per second. 
So they're going to end somewhere, say, over here. <coughs> Will the time it takes to hit the ground be 0 0.55, be less than 0.55, or more than 0.55? Same. Just like the bullet dropped and the bullet fired. The amount of time it took in the air is dependent upon the height, their initial velocity, and gravity. Nothing to do with how fast they're moving in the extra. Okay. Why don't you set up your list of variables for number two? Okay. Go through, read problem number two, Cupid shoots a love arrow horizontally at a velocity of 100 meters per second at an unsuspecting high school student that's 24 meters away. How far will the arrow drop before reaching the soon to be love struck student? So identify the identify the numbers in the equation. Then work through your problem types. Then make a list of your variables. I'm going to say don't solve it quite yet, but. Maybe you have this list done, maybe not, but I think you're, you're on the right track, hopefully, at this point. So I did a really quick sketch. The idea is 20, the arrow is 24 meters away from the student. The arrow is going to drop because gravity is going to pull it down. We're trying to figure out how far does that arrow drop. Okay. So, I already went through and I used my black marker to represent it's a 2D motion problem, right? Is it a projectile motion problem? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So because of that, I needed more, more velocity in the x direction. So these are the same because this is zero. And because this is projectile, that's what we get because it's a projectile motion problem. Is it a horizontal launch problem? Zero shot flat horizontally? Yes. Yeah. Horizontally, right? Yeah. So because it's shot horizontally, that is initial velocity of zero. Right? Red. 100 meters per second. Meters per second is a velocity. Is it in velocity in the x or final velocity in the y? X. So that's 100. 24 meters away. What is that? X. That's delta x. And then my orange question mark is my delta. 
solve for W. What's your delta Y? You go through and you figure it out. Solve for it. Chances are high, you're going to have to solve for time first, just so you know that. Hopefully you've determined already, or you're really close, your time should be 0 0.24 seconds. If you had to solve for that before, you could solve for delta y. So that's kind of a, are you on the right track? solve in the x direction, right? Way to solve. Oh. So we have to solve for time first over okay. here. Okay, that's right. Yeah, because you don't have enough information over here. You yeah, need at least five. three numbers. I forgot to say, I forgot with my 2D motion part, I forgot to say that my times were the same. Just uh, kind of get you, hopefully, kind of any questions clarified. In order for us to solve for this, I don't have enough numbers here that I need to get the time. In order to get the time, I have to solve for time over here. And in the x direction, if we use equation number three, that's where I get that 20.24 seconds. It's my displacement divided by my velocity to give me my Then once I know that this is 0 0.24 <coughs> seconds, then in the y direction, I can choose an equation. And once again, I don't know final velocity. So I use equation number three again, and we should get a displacement of negative. It's going to go drop, so negative is going down, the arrow is going down, negative 0 0.28 meters. Questions that I can answer overall? Okay, then I don't want to talk about this any more today. Um, so, um, in just a moment, I will put out your first homework sheet. Um, most of these, I'm going to say most of these, are projectile motion problems. Most of these are 2D motion projectile horizontal launch. There's a few that aren't. Number three is not. I'll draw a picture on the board really quick. Actually, maybe just skip number three for today. I can talk about that. 
Um, and then there's a little review on the back, which probably are, are windy motions for the record. So um, for today, let's skip question number three. Um, but that we can get some time working and really ask questions, because if you don't get this now, we need to make sure we get these clarified.